Hi! In this video, we are going to take a look at a tool called Git Secret that lets us encrypt secrets and store them directly in a Git repository. The general flow of the tool looks like this. Imagine that you have a remote Git repository that contains encrypted files via Git Secret, and then you have a host system that tracks those files. So you got the files by a Git clone, for example. And on the host system, you have Git Secret installed and also GPG, which is used by Git Secret under the hood. The host system contains a secret key that is not tracked via Git, but that key can be used to decrypt the files so that we can use it in plain text. I have added both tools to our Docker setup, and you can follow along by checking out the corresponding branch, build the Docker setup, and start it. The container already includes Git Secret and GPG. Let's log into the application container and check if GPG is actually installed. And to get started, we need to create a GPG key pair. It is important to remember the email address because we will need it later for Git secret. We will use no passphrase for the key, so simply hit OK. And we will confirm that yes, actually no protection is needed for now. The key pair is now automatically added to GPG and I can show them via GPG list secret keys to see the secret keys and GPG list keys to see the public keys. Now let's check Git secret. Initialize a new Git repository. Initialize Git secret. This will create this .git secret directory that currently only contains a single file mapping.cfg. And I will now add the first user. The email address that I used here is the same that we used when I created the GPG key pair. I can check all the users with git secret who knows and will now create a secret file by creating a .n file and store a secret password. Since this file should not be stored in the git repository, I will now add it to git secret by running git secret add and then the name of the file. Because the file should definitely not show up in the repository, git secret will check if it is listed in the git ignore file. If that's not the case, it will automatically add it to the file. If we now take a look at the mapping file, then we can see that the file is listed. We can also run the command git secret list. So far, the file is not encrypted, so it's still available in plain text. I need to run git secret hide in order to encrypt it. This will create the file .env.secret, which is the default extension that is used by git secret. And we can take a look at that encrypted file. It contains just garbage random bytes. So it can be stored safely in the repository. We can now change the unencrypted file and use the command git secret changes to show any changes of the encrypted file versus the unencrypted file. Now let's see if the decryption process actually works. So I'm first going to delete the file, ensure that it's actually gone, and decrypt the previously encrypted file. Now the unencrypted file is restored, and it contains the original content of the encrypted file. To remove a user from git secret, we run the command git secret kill person at the email address of the user we want to remove. Caution, this will remove the user, but we still need to re-encrypt the secrets to actually make sure that this user can't decrypt the secrets any longer. We can also remove a file from git secret by using git secret remove and then the name of the file. How can we integrate this setup into our normal development flow? When we work in a team, then we usually have some sort of remote Git repository that stores our code base, and that code base is then shared amongst different users. So Alice and Bob in this example would clone the code base. Alice has her own secret key. Bob also has his own secret key, and their public keys live inside the code base. The encrypted files can now be decrypted by both parties. And in our previous example, both users would have to install Git secret and GPG on their host system. Because that introduces some overhead, I have opted to go a different route, remove Git secret and GPG from the host system, instead provide it via a Docker container, then share the code base with a bind mount that includes not only the files in the Git repository, but also the secret file that has to be stored in the code base. 
And now we can run git secret in the Docker container to decrypt the file because the secret key is now also shared with the container. Because it's kind of hard to remember all the individual commands for gpg and for git secret, I have opted once again to put everything in our make file so that it becomes much easier to use. And we will go through the individual commands in a second when we walk through a real example. I have already created a gpg key pair for our user Alice. That means I have a public key that is stored in the .dev gpg minus keys folder and also the corresponding secret key. And now I'm going to create another key pair for our user Bob. I will use the email address bob at example.com and I will define all the necessary details directly on the command line. So I don't have to go through the lengthy creation process once again, but can run it in batch mode. The key pair has been created and I will now export the secret key for our user bob at example.com to bob minus secret.gpg. And I will do the same for the public key. I will also store it in the .dev gpg keys folder as we stored Alice's key. In the code base, there is already one encrypted file that is named password.txt, but Bob will not be able to decrypt this file just yet. Let's double check that Bob's key is actually loaded and try to decrypt the secret. And as expected, the decryption fails. So let's restart the Docker container to get a clean GPG slate that doesn't have any keys at all yet. I'm gonna run make docker down and make docker up to restart the Docker setup. So far, no GPG keys exist at all in our Docker container. I can verify that by running the list keys command in Docker. You can see that under the hood, the make target invoked our Docker setup and then use the gpg list keys command. And when this is done for the very first time, some initial directories are being created by gpg, but that isn't important here. The important thing is that nothing is shown when we run the list keys command. So let's import the secret key of ls by running the make target gpg in it. That will import the default secret key that is defined in the variable default secret gpg key that is defined up here as secret.gpg, and again, is the secret key of ls. The command will also import the default public keys that are stored in the variable default public gpg keys, and that variable simply references the directory that contains the public gpg keys. Let's run the init command. And we can see that indeed ls's secret key has been imported, and the two public keys of Alice and of Bob have also been imported. I can verify this by running gpg in Docker with the list keys option. It'll show both keys. And for the secret key, it will only show Alice's key. So let's now add Bob to git secret. You can see that under the hood, the target git secret was invoked with the arguments tell bob at example.com. In our make file, we can see that it will simply proxy the command to Docker run git secret with all the given arguments. So Bob should now be able to decrypt the secrets. We can also verify this by running make secret show users, which shows Alice and Bob. And we need to re-encrypt the secrets so that Bob will actually be able to decrypt. Now let's once again restart Docker to get a clean GPG slate. But this time we are going to use Bob's secret key instead of Alice's secret key. So let's copy the file over, run gpg in it, double check that we have actually activated Bob's secret key, and try to decrypt the files. And this time it actually worked as expected. You can also find a much more in-depth article on my blog under pascalando.com git secret encrypt repository docker. And as always, you find all the files in the Docker PHP tutorial repository directly on GitHub. Thank you for watching.